Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And as I hope you know by now, that I, Doug Clark, the Clark Law Firm, does not, has not, and will never represent gas or pipeline companies. Never have, never will, ever. Don't care, never have, never will. I represent Pennsylvania landowners, property owners, oil and gas right owners, for such things, including but not limited to oil and gas lease reviews, consultations, negotiations, pipeline agreements, same thing, reviews, negotiations, consultations, breaches of agreements. Guys, if you are given a lease amendment, modification, ratification, any of those words, put the pen down and pick up the phone multi-unit well consent requests please put the pen down and pick up the phone you must take advantage of opportunities when they are presented to you you need to get assistance and information from somebody who is working for you who is looking to help you who wants to give you the information you need for your situation. You do not, you do not want to rely on the company representative, the company employee, or the landman who works for the company, not you. You do not think about it. You do not want to rely on the other side. You never would in anything else. Why would you ever rely on the other side in something so important? Something that's potentially generational, having impacts on your children and your children's children. You cannot rely on the other side to give you the information you need. And you don't have to take my word for it. I, you know, you can and you should, but you don't have to because we have a history here in Pennsylvania. You have, and it's not just an oil and gas, but we're, let's talk oil and gas. We have tens of thousands of people in Pennsylvania. This is not an exaggeration. Tens of thousands of people in Pennsylvania believed that they were going to be paid oil and gas royalties without deductions. And now that is not occurring the way they believed it would occur. Why did they believe it? They were told time and time again in many, 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 many cases. This means royalties without deductions. And they are being people are being told that today. And if you listen to the show, you know that this is something that makes me go out of my mind. Today, today, people are given leases with addendums that state royalty without deduction, when in reality, it's just simply not true. Now, it may be a semantic argument where the company could say, well, we're giving you wellhead and therefore we're not deducting anything, but that's not what we're talking about on our side. We're talking about when you sell the gas to a third party, you should not take deductions to transport the gas to that location. That's what we're talking about. And they're taking these deductions under headings that explicitly say, that expressly say, literally in bold letters, royalties without deduction. We need to make sure we're getting our own advice, our own counsel, by somebody who knows what they're doing, who's working and fighting for you, and to make sure that you have the information that you need to make the right decision for you, whatever that may be. Whatever that may be, you need to make sure that you have the information. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can always call the office, learn about reviews, consult consultations, oil and gas representation, 570 3070702 regardless of your location i was excited this week i have a new client 
who resides in the state of Oregon. Oregon. So to give you an idea, if you live in western Pennsylvania, you live in north central, you live in southwestern or northeast, regardless of your location, give us a call, 570-307-0702 and see if we can help you, see if I can help you. Also, regardless of where you live in the country, again, I have a pending client right now. I have a couple in Colorado, some in uh, California, now in Oregon, in Texas, and, and almost always have New York and New Jersey clients in Virginia now. Um, so regardless of your location, please don't be worried about location. Call, and then if after the call, you say, well, you know what? I'm not comfortable about this. I need to find somebody maybe closer. Hey, look, that is fine, but give us a call and just find out. And I say this because I know, I know, and I hope it sounds the right way, but I know that I have the privilege of helping people all the time. And I get to do these reviews and consultations with people. And the feedback is always, always great. And I know what, where my mind is and I know what I'm trying to do and I know what my goals are and I do this every day. And so I really encourage you because I really believe that I can help you. And here's the other part. And I promise you this. If I can't help you, if I don't think I can do something that helps you, that'll be the first thing that I say to you. So again, please don't think that I'm sitting here saying, oh gosh, I wish somebody would call me. I am so blessed and fortunate to have a great client base. Our client retention is awesome, but I want to help everybody I possibly can. And I know because every day we get calls and people are presented with terrible agreements. People are signing terrible agreements. People are afraid to call, whether it be me or somebody, please put down the pen and pick up the phone. We got to get you this information now more than ever. And there's a lot that we can take from recent history and develop from. You know, routinely pipeline agreement offers increase by tens of thousands of dollars, routinely. But if you only listen to the land man or the company representative, that's not gonna probably happen. There are things that you need to know that they're not going to tell you. And why would they tell you they don't work for you. They're not trying to negotiate to get you the best possible deal. And I don't care what they say. They are not fighting for you. If they are, then they're a horrific employee of their client, the gas or pipeline company, because that is their client. It's either their job to do the best they can for their company because they work for them, or it's their job to do the best they can for their client who they are representing. You, as the landowner, property owner, oil and gas right owner, are not their client. They are not there to represent you. Never forget that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'll give you an example. <laughs> this is amazing. This is just amazing to me. So we'll go hypothetical here. So let me give you a hypothetical case of something that could occur. There's something that could occur. So let's say that, uh, we'll say a pipeline company does something that they shouldn't do. Let's pretend that they install uh, a facility on a property, maybe a, let's say they put a valve site, we'll say on a property that they didn't have permission to do under the original agreement. And so what can you do as the landowner? Well, you can say, hey, look, you don't have permission here. You need to get this off my property. You can say, I will leave it on my property if we can reach an agreement. Those are, and the agreement, of course, would involve a payment of some sort of money. Now, maybe you want to fence it off. Maybe you want to make sure that you're protected from liability. There's all kinds of other considerations to, that you need to think about. However, those are kind of your basic, you know, basic ideas. So, Let's say I get this situation and normally in a case like this, the company may come out, let's say they offer just a, a little bit of money, you know, and say, oh, well, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, here we're offer this little bit of money. So talk to a client, talk to the landowner, say, look, you know what, this thing, if you want to keep it there, this is worth a lot more money than what they're offering. If you want to have this removed, you can force them to have this removed in this situation, I believe. So 
what happens? I talk to hypothetically the company. Company says, we give a demand. Company says, oh, we're crazy. It doesn't cost that much. We'll go ahead and remove it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Because that was our deal anyway. Oh, yeah. And you put it there and had it there, let's say, for years without authority or permission. And so now you say, okay, we'll remove it. All right, well, then remove it. But it's got to go because it's there now and it shouldn't be there. Well, lo and behold, what happens? Uh, hypothetically, we got a different con or additional conversations. And all of a sudden, maybe we're not so crazy on our side. And maybe now the company offers literally 10 times plus what they originally offered. Saying, I guess then again, so we're not so crazy when we say, hey, here's the type of range that this needs to be. And then, now here's the kicker. Imagine this. So I'm going to tell you, I understand and know the leverage in this situation. I understand it and I know it. And so I'm going to say, talk to my client. So I want to talk to my client and we're going to go over this change in circumstances in this new offer. Now, of course, I talk to the company and I explain that I know the position, I know the leverage, and I have a demand on behalf of my client. So again, they say, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy, disappear. And then what do they do? They try to go and independently work on the client and not go through me because they believe that they can get a landowner who doesn't understand the leverage in the law, or maybe doesn't, as opposed to trying to go through me, who they know it's not going to work because I understand. They're not going to trick me. They're not going to play games with me. They're not going to dupe me. It's not going to happen. So I get this new offer. I have a call. I'm going to schedule with a client. Well, imagine this. Imagine if the company asks if they can be on the call between me and my client. Hey, hey, do you mind if we're on the call? Yeah, I mind. I mind. The audacity to ask that question is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It just to me is really, I have a hard time believing it. Do you mind if we can be on the call with you and your client? because they don't want me telling my client what the leverage is. They don't want that. They want to try to work on the narrative that they've created on their own. And that's the case that you find all the time where company people, my experience, will try to talk to the landowner, create relationships, friendships, sob stories, but boy, I tell you, you can offer them all the sob stories you want and they'll say, look at the contract. That happens all the time. So the idea, you know, okay, can we, can I get on the phone and listen when you talk to management or when anybody's making decisions as to what you're willing to pay in order to correct this situation? Can I get on the phone for your internal discussions? No, it's ludicrous ludicrous but these guys have that kind of audacity they have this kind of audacity which should tell you what we're dealing with in many 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 cases so heck no you can't be on the phone you can't be on the phone between me and my client when i explain that in fact maybe my client has a lot more leverage than what the client or what the company is indicating when i give my client the truth of what their rights are, what their options are, and we talk about ranges and different approaches that the client could take and the type of response that we would anticipate will, we will elicit from the company. Well, yeah, we want the company on the phone for that. <laughs> it's just insane. I mean, really, it's insane to think about that. It's just insane. And that's, I'm telling you, it's the example. It's they companies do not want companies do not want you to have good quality 
accurate, correct information from somebody working for you who's trying to do the best they can for you. That is my opinion. They want you to pick up a pen and sign whatever they put in front of you. That's what they want. That is what they want. That's why they say, oh, you don't need a lawyer for this. Oh, you don't need a lawyer for this. Oh, yeah, this other guy had a lawyer. Here's what he signed. Here, here, here. Go ahead. Here's the pen. Sign it. No. You, every single person, whether you call me or call somebody else, needs to, before they sign anything, put the pen down, pick up the phone, do a review, consultation, and then decide, does it make sense to have additional representation? But we have to stop signing these documents. You have to understand what we're dealing with. You have to understand that there are literally tens of thousands of people who feel that they were duped and tricked in the past. Do we think that that's all over? You know, shame on me or shame, fool me once, shame on you. Do we think that was the only fool job that's coming around to fool me once? Well, I'm going to tell you it's not. It's not. And the new fool job is pipelines. That's the new thing. Again, my opinion. All the show's my opinion. Not specific legal advice for anyone. My opinion. But, yeah, I'm going to talk about it here coming up in the next segment. Pipelines. Pipelines. It is amazing to me. What is occurring today with pipelines, especially in areas that aren't heavily developed right now? Susquehanna County, I don't know when the last time I did a pipeline below $30 a foot. And I'm going to tell you, the vast majority of pipelines that I do, I believe are probably in excess of $50 a foot. I've done many, many, many in excess of $100 a foot, even done one or two or three at $1,000 plus a foot. So when we're talking about $10 a foot, I don't have words for that. We talk about $15 a foot. I don't have words for that. That to me is a joke. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's crazy. It's not fair. It's not appropriate. I don't have words for it. So I guess that hopefully gives an idea of what I think of $10 and $15 a foot for pipeline offers. Now, again, not specific advice. If you had an offer like that, we do a review consultation. If we talk and we'll talk about what I think, what the offer is, what your market is, what your options are, what are the gas lease rights, what are your leverage points? Those are things you need to know. Not, oh, well, your neighbor signed for $15 or $10. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to talk about this in the next segment. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give me a call. Learn about what we can do. See if I can help you. These reviews and consultations are a great way to start. Usually take one to two hours. We can do them by telephone or in office, whatever your preference is. Let's get you the information you need. Let's make sure you're signing the best possible agreements for you today and then for your children and your children's children. Let's make sure of it. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. And make sure you tune in each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. We're going to have a fun show today. Feeling like ranting a bit, so that's what we'll do. Stick with me. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station. We have literally just passed eight years of All Things Marcellus. I have been doing this show for eight years. Never did a radio show before, and when I did the first show, I actually, I think I wrote out, well, I know I did. I wrote out every single word. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. Now, you see me, if you saw me, I'm sitting here. I just got a couple pieces of notes. I could, I have hours and hours and hours of radio shows, just ideas sitting in notes. So, stay with us. We're not done. I'm not done. It's my, it's. You know, it is. It's my therapy on the weekends. So sometimes I get ranting. You know, sometimes it's a lot more factual. Sometimes it's a bit more of a rant. But I'm going to tell you, uh, today's going to be a bit of a rant because I feel like it. <laughs> I have some energy uh, kind of fired up. And I'll tell you, you know, quite frankly, the concept of a landman wanting to be on the phone with me and my client when we're talking about an offer is, again, it's got me fired up. So 
that's that's kind of the basis of what's got me fired. And then I'll tell you this, another thing. So here we go. Let's let's do it. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> I know people like to do this. I'm going to go ahead and take a shot at uh, some unnamed attorney. I had somebody send something to me that was a fee agreement that was presented to them by an attorney to negotiate an oil and gas lease. Now, very important. This person is not currently leased, does not have a lease on the property. So they're wide open, free agent. The attorney is seeking to charge the person a contingency fee, a percentage, I shouldn't even say contingent, but it is, but a percentage of the signing bonus that the person receives, then a percentage of their gas royalties or oil and gas royalties for the lifetime of their lease. So if you were represented by this attorney, you would pay the attorney a percentage of whatever your upfront bonus was. Then for as long as that lease exists, which could easily be 30, 50 years or more, you would be paying a portion of the royalties due to you to this attorney. You have to assign a portion of your royalties and your royalty payments every month to the attorney forever for doing what for the life of the lease, but for doing what forget it for negotiating an oil and gas lease. If I did that, I don't know where the most exotic, beautiful, expensive place in the world is. I don't know where it is, but I think I could be there. That to me is insane to take a percentage of somebody's royalties for negotiating a gas lease when that person is not currently leased to me is crazy, is crazy, absolutely crazy. And in my opinion, should never be done in that situation. Now, let me say something. If you have a lease or there's a lease in place and the company says it's valid and we say it isn't, and we're going to challenge that lease and we're going to go into court potentially or arbitration to get that lease knocked out. And then as part of that process, our goal is to negotiate a new lease, or maybe we are looking to negotiate an amendment or modification that results in a payment of money. I think in that scenario that it can make sense to have a contingency or a percentage fee because you're trying to knock out a lease, which could take a lot of time and effort and a lot of hours to knock out a lease and then get a new one in its place because the company claims already they have a lease. So if you do nothing, the company is going to continue to say they have a lease and you're not going to be able to get a new lease. So you don't want to pay the attorney probably hourly to fight the old lease to try to get it overturned. So it's a reasonable scenario, in my opinion, to say, okay, hey, look, attorney, if you can knock this out and get me a new lease, I will pay you a percentage of the bonus, let's say, for the new lease. And maybe even do a small thing with the royalties, but you cap it after a couple years or a few years. This concept of somebody not having a lease, no lease in place, so they could just go and lease with any company that makes them an offer. They don't have to try to knock out an existing lease or a disputed lease. There's just simply no lease in this property. Please, guys, in my opinion, do not enter into an agreement with a law firm or, God forbid, a non-law firm to pay them a percentage of your future royalties. Don't do that. And boy, oh boy, don't do it for the lifetime of your lease. You know, it's one of those things where that's why people sometimes are afraid to pick up the phone and call an attorney because they're afraid the attorney is going to rip them off. And that's just really, really, really sad. You know, to me, that's really sad. Now, look, I'm not from a family of attorneys. I'm from a family of farmers and steel workers. And I'm unbelievably blessed to be able to do what I do. 
and to have the privilege to represent people like my father, my mother, my grandparents, and all the neighbors that I grew up around in the airport road, Dime Road, Armstrong County. It's been, it's an amazing, amazing thing for me. And so that's why I say I'm very comfortable. I lay my head down at night every night knowing that I'm really doing the best I can, fighting for people, trying to help people make their lives better, taking on the companies to make sure people get the best deal that they can get, to maximize the money that you can get today, to maximize potential opportunities in the future, and to minimize the disturbance of your property. And I do this all the time, so I'm fortunate enough then to have the knowledge, the background, and the experience to really help people. And so I consider it my job to help people and to do it fairly and never to take advantage of someone. Never take advantage of someone. Never. Never. And that's why I can never, myself, I can never work for a company because I would feel that at some point I would be taking advantage of people because of their lack of knowledge or information. And that's just not me. I mean, I'm not so, like, that's good. With I mean, We need people working for the companies, but that's my side of it. That's where I'm from. So I really, and that's why I get so much to encourage people about the review and consultation service. Because that's kind of like, it's like stipping, di <laughs> it's like dipping your toe in the water. To say like, okay, you know, I've never had an attorney. I don't know if I want to use an attorney. I don't know if the attorney's going to try to rip me off. Well, then just take, you know, dip the toe in the water. Do a review and consultation. Usually takes an hour to two combined. Send me all your information. Now, understand this too. I do these all myself. No other attorney, just me. I will get on the phone with you, your relatives. will You can be in different places in different parts of the country, in the state. You can come to the office. Send me the information. I review it. We get on the phone and I, tell, I answer all your questions and give you everything, all the information that I think you need to know that can help you and offer you my best possible advice. And it's an hourly based situation. And I'm going to tell you, person says, Hey, what do you think of this fee agreement? I said, well, I, th I think it's terrible. <laughs> I think it's horrible. You know, it's embarrassing to me. I think it's terrible. Throw it away, throw it away. And then you see what the lawyer does. It's not even like this is all they do. It's not like they just, you know, do oil and gas all the time. No. In my mind, again, this is my opinion, it's an opportunity to take advantage of a situation. And again, in my mind, my opinion, I don't go for that. <laughs> it's not my thing. And, you know, I don't want to see that occur to people. I don't want to see that occur. So look, hey, maybe it is right for you and that's a good thing to do. Uh, and you want to do it, that's fine. I'm just telling you, I'm really against it because I think that that ends up where the landowner pays way more money than whatever that service that they received was worth. So please be careful of that, please. And if you want to learn about what we do, you want to learn about reviews and consultations. And look, I talk about reviews and consultations, but we do straight negotiations all the time, breach of leases, violations of payments of oil and gas royalties. You know, are you getting the deductions that you shouldn't? Uh, shut-ins in Tioga, multi-unit well consents, lease amendment reviews, ratifications, buying and selling oil and gas rights. If you're selling your gas rights, give us a call, do a review and consultation. Again, you call, find out if a review and consultation is right for you. And then you get a little flavor. And if you like it and you think, hey, I need some more help, we go further. If that's all you need, that's all you need. You know, we're not, this isn't, you know, we don't sell things here. You know, I'm not selling you anything. I'm giving you advice. I'm offering you service. I work for you. That's our deal. I work for you and give you the best possible advice and information that I can for you to do as well as you possibly can. I work for you. Remember, the land man does not. The gas company employee doesn't work for you or any of their representatives. Whether you call me, call somebody who works for you and who knows what they are doing. Again, what they are doing. Do not call me if you're getting divorced. I don't do divorces. Don't call me if you have a child custody case. I don't do that. Don't call me if you got a DUI. I don't do those anymore. I do oil and gas. Don't call the DUI attorney 
the family law attorney or any other or civil law attorney who doesn't do oil and gas and doesn't do it regularly. It is much more, in my opinion, it is so much more important today to have an attorney working for you who has this oil and gas experience. It's much more important today. There are so many more loopholes that we can identify, payment issues, breach of contract issues, unitization issues, ratification issues that I'm telling you, I see way too many times people come to me after talking to another attorney and they say, well, the other attorney said it was fine. So, well, you know, you know hey, I, I don't have anything against this person, but unfortunately, you know, I have to disagree. And then here's a funny one. So I, uh, it was many times I'll have people who come to me after they've talked to other attorneys. And in this case, uh, the client came to me, I'm representing them for these negotiations. This is actually in Southwestern Pennsylvania. So the land man, I introduced myself and say, okay, Hey, I'm going to prepare this addendum and I'm going to send you, you know, the terms that we would like to have and the financial request that we'd like to have for this agreement. So in classic, in my opinion, classic landman speak or response. Oh, hey, great to see you. Oh, great, great, great. Oh, this should be real easy. Oh, yeah. And the other attorney thought this was a really good deal. <laughs> and I say with them, and I mean this, and I do. I am, I am a nice person. I'm a really good guy, I think. I mean, it, you want to be a good person. So I say, look, I mean this very respectfully. But I have to make sure that you understand this. I do not at all care what the other attorney thought who's not involved in this. Just like I don't care what the neighbors signed or what other people in the area signed. They may have been very uninformed or had very bad legal representation. And just because they were uninformed and they had bad legal representation. That will never impact what occurs in my representation of my client. So you can say those things and I can hear them, but just understand they have no significance or relevance to me whatsoever as I move forward in this process. So don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. All right, I'm way over this segment too. You're listening to All Things Marcellus. With me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. We just passed eight years today of doing All Things Marcellus. So make sure you tune in each and every week and give us a call. Learn about what we do. Learn about all different types of representation, oil and gas related, and see if we can help you. 570 307 0702. 570-307-0702 and stay tuned for this very important message and I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can call the office, learn about the services, reviews, consultations. I have to take some time and just say to all my friends in Tioga County, shut in with vertical wells especially if you have a hundred acres or more and you've been shut in eight years, nine years or more, I want to hear from you. I really want to hear from you. We need to stop this. And we're hearing from people. I do these reviews and consultations. Give us a call. Those scenarios, now I want to be clear, those scenarios, Tioga County, held by these shut-ins eight years or more, and you have to, I need a decent acreage too, because it has to justify the challenge, ideally over a hundred acres. I do those reviews and consultations without charge. Now, again, this is these one, this, this particular service, because we want to see what we can do to change this. Like we need to change this. This is garbage in my mind. This doesn't happen anywhere else. This is not normal. So. There is no obligation. There is no, and I don't want to sound like these commercials, but I'm telling you, pick up the phone and call us. You can send me your lease, send me maybe your unitization information. We'll tell you what we need. I will review it all personally and give you my opinion, whether you have a claim. 
and why I think you have a claim or why you don't have a why I don't think you have a claim and you decide what you want to do about it you we don't ever have to talk again or we can talk about ways that you may want to address it so there is no you know again I don't sell anything I never pressure anybody on anything I want to get you this information and if I can help you and we're a good fit and you want us and you want me to try to help you then I want to try to help you and if it doesn't work out that's okay so the worst thing in the world in that scenario you have a hundred acres or more you're shut in eight years or more you're in Tioga County the worst scenario that can occur is you get a free opinion as to your situation and what type of arguments you have and you decide how to go forward and I'm okay with that I'm okay with that I want people to have this information it drives me out of my mind what I see in Tioga County it is killing me it just I literally think about it at night and I'm not joking I literally do also I just want to say if you are given a and, and also my friends in Tioga but everybody else remember this too if you get a shut-in payment and you think that something's wrong and you shouldn't keep getting these shut-in payments and maybe your lease expired do not cash the check do not cash the check call we'll do a review and consultation call before you cash the check do not cash the check if you think there's a problem and that goes across the board regardless of where you are because the first thing the company is going to do is say oh well you cashed the check therefore you have ratified or agreed that you have an active and valid gas lease or that the pipeline agreement is active and valid if you think there is anything wrong with your lease pipeline agreement or other agreement and you get a check get an evaluation before you cash the check get an evaluation before you cash the check I'm telling you it's really important so as people in Tioga are cycling through and getting these shut-in checks if you think there's a question like hey I've been shut in longer than what I think is an appropriate is appropriate I haven't shut in for eight years I've been shut in for nine years I've been shut in for a long time don't cash that check give us a call I'll do that evaluation without charge and give you my thoughts and you can decide however you want to proceed or not proceed at all but we got to try to stop this we really really do so 570-307-0702 and while I'm at it again I just got to talk about it is big this is big 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 happening all the time now companies are requesting people to sign multi-unit well consent forms to agree to allow these wells to go from one unit to be drilled out and go to a second unit and maybe a third if you are just signing again as with every document but if you're just signing a multi-unit well consent that you receive in the mail or they bring to you and you're not attempting to negotiate it in my mind in my opinion you are making a very big mistake so get a multi-unit well consent what should you do my advice would be pick up the phone put the pen down and either call us or call someone who knows what they're doing and find out what does this mean do you have any leverage is there anything you can do to improve your situation get the answers that you need and sure as heck don't get these answers from the company don't get the answers from the company get them from somebody working for you you're listening to all things Marcellus with me attorney Doug Clark of the Clark law firm give us a call learn about reviews consultations 570-307-0702 remember buying selling oil and gas rights gas lease negotiations gas lease reviews consultations pipeline agreements surface use agreements buying and selling property with get oil and gas rights meter compressor sites you name it unitization issues royalty issues shut in issues give us a call see if we can help you see if we're right for you remember to regardless of your location give us a call and see if we can help 570-307-0702 and I want to say again you know because I'm pretty proud of this you know we've hit our eighth year 
of doing all things Marcellus. Eight years, and we're gonna we're not stopping because there's a lot of information that needs to get out there. Eight years I've been doing this radio show. And I'm really excited about it and I'm really proud about it. And I want to remind everybody that if you're new to the show, you can go to, and if you're not new to the show, you can always, and you should be doing this. Go to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Think about it. You have a gas lease issue. Why not go to pagasleaseattorney.com? And if nothing else, just get some basic information. You know, just use it as a resource. It's not specific advice for anybody, but it certainly can be used for a resource. Go to pipelineattorney.com. Again, think about it. If you have a pipeline agreement that you are considering and you're not going to pipelineattorney.com, you just got to type in the words pipelineattorney.com. Read about common mistakes, leverage issues. Use it as a general resource. Again, it's not specific advice. Use the websites as a resource. And we have a section on the websites where you can go back and listen to the radio shows. You can listen to today's show on Monday morning and all week. <laughs> and there are hours and hours and hours of radio shows that are available on the websites. So you just go to the websites at your convenience and check out the radio shows. There are pipeline shows, there's unitization shows, royalty shows, buying and selling gas rate shows, you name it. There's many shows on the topic. So use the websites as a resource. Use the radio shows as a resource, but always remember they're not specific advice for you and your situation because the specific advice is only get specific advice. You know, have a review consultation on your own for your specific situation. You know, we talk about these examples and I try to give you know, examples, lessons, hypotheticals of things that can occur. So we're watching out for them and making sure that we're protecting ourselves. But on an individual basis, that's where the advice is critical to understand your individual leverage, your negotiation leverage, what you may be able to do as far as obtaining more money and also to understand and explore your own risk tolerance. You know, if you push too hard, maybe you lose the agreement, but where is that right point for you? Well, it's not a simple factor. You can say, oh, if I ask for more money, I'm going to lose it. Well, no, it's a combination of understanding and evaluating your leverage to negotiate the leverage you have in your position. And then also considering the risk that you're willing to tolerate. And sometimes you get a perfect storm. You get a person that has incredible leverage because the company really needs to go through their property, let's say on a pipeline. And you get a person who doesn't mind the agreement going away, who's willing to tolerate a lot of risk because they don't care if the agreement goes away. And when you get the right leverage, when you get the le right leverage and you get a person with a high risk tolerance, that's when you get about 750 foot of pipeline with an agreement for the company to pay $750,000. That's the perfect storm to have a thousand dollars a foot for the pipeline. That's a perfect storm. And I'm going to tell you, do you think the company was offering $750,000 for about 750 feet of pipeline? Well, they sure as heck didn't start there. So that's, again, we use extreme examples because they're the examples to show what can occur, but routinely people have more leverage and can tolerate more risk that will result in additional payment and better language. But you have to have that discussion by somebody who really understands those points and is working for you. So give us a call, see if we can help you. 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. And keep listening to all things Marcellus. Eight years in the bank and we're not stopping. Each and every week at this time on this station, I'll be right back. Welcome back to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus, where we just celebrated our eighth year of doing this radio show. 
Really excited about that. And I want to, again, encourage everybody. Remember, reviews and consultations, I do them all myself. We'll either be on the phone. We'll, you're more than invited, more than welcome to come to the office. I love to do them in person. But, for example, you know, I said I did one this week with somebody with a couple in Oregon. Uh, talked to somebody this week in Colorado, a client of mine. So, you know, all over the state of Pennsylvania, or Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and all over the country, and, of course, have represented clients in different parts of the world who have property in Pennsylvania. Another thing is, I want to also encourage people, I don't care if you have, you know, I talk about doing these reviews with properties that have a lot of acreage. I've represented clients with over a thousand acres many, many, many times. I've also represented clients with less than one acre many, 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 many times. And again, as I say, if I can't help you, if it does not make financial sense for you to have me represent you in any fashion, or if I can't even help you, and this is extremely rare in a review and consultation, I'll let you know. You know, I will let you know immediately. The goal here is to do the best job and to help people. And it's, and if you do it right, it's a great thing. Everybody benefits. So regardless of your location, regardless of the size of the property, the phone call, nothing to it. Just give us a call. See if we can help you. We love helping the Pennsylvania landowner. Go to the websites, and if you don't, again, you hear me talk on the radio, go to the websites, look at the testimonials, call the office, see the vibe you get. We are here to help you, and we love what we do. So I really want to encourage people. And I know that's a lot, a lot of times people are afraid to call, and they enter into really bad agreements because they're not comfortable to make that call. Don't let that happen. Be comfortable. I'm telling you, we're nice people. We're here to help you. And no one's a number here. No one's a number to us. You're a client that our job is to do the best we can to help you. And ask around any other clients. You know, we are so proud of our or excuse me, <laughs> representation, reputation. So proud of it because we really try our best to make sure we're doing the best we can for every client. And so again, all of the reviews and consultations are done by me. I read all the documents in preparation. We get on the phone, you come to the office and we get down the business on your case. And again, they have been great. They have been a great service and outstanding feedback. So really encourage you. And again, multi-unit well consents. We got to stop signing those and pick up the phone and find out, you know, what's this all about? Can you negotiate? What can you do? You got it. Remember every single time you're asked to sign something, put down the pen and pick up the phone. It can be a potential opportunity for you to greatly increase your circumstances. Could be a potential, you know, again, I talked about this one where just in a matter of no time, the offers 10 times what it was originally. You know, when it came out originally, now it's 10 times higher. And quite frankly, I certainly expect it'll even go higher than that. But people imagine that. You just say, oh, oh, okay, well, that's all they're offering. And then you take it when you could have had 10 times that. And you, how could you find out? Well, you know, have a review and consultation. Learn your leverage. Like I say, you know, you got to understand your leverage and your ability to tolerate risk. How much risk do you want to tolerate? But at the same time, I talk to people that say, look, I don't want this proposed activity under any circumstances. And I'll review and say, okay, well, what can we do? Can we stop it? Can we limit it? What can we do? And then we have a discussion as to what those rights are. And sometimes the rights are is you can absolutely say no. I mean, I talk to so many people who fear that, oh, well, I have to agree to this pipeline because they'll get eminent domain. When the reality is, is that's almost in all cases, not true at all. Also, another thing, oh, I have to agree to the pipeline because the land has said, oh, they have the rights under the gas lease anyway. And I'm going to tell you that is many times not correct. And even if they have rights, they have limited rights. And when you sign that pipeline agreement, you're giving them substantially more rights. And in fact, I can tell you from a practical standpoint, in many cases, if you don't sign this agreement, they won't put this pipeline here in your property. Sometimes it may be because once your gas lease expires, 
they wouldn't have the right to have the pipeline on the property anymore. And in that scenario, they're not going to do that. They're not going to install a pipeline that they have to stop using when your gas lease terminates and many times. So those are just small examples of things that you need to talk about and discuss. And there's many, many more. And that's what we talk about on that individual basis. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I only have a few minutes here, but I want to say, and I know I talk about Tioga County a lot. I have a lot of clients in Tioga County. I, I love the people. I love the work there. Um, and I think what's happening there is just, it, you know, it, it has me more irritated than anywhere in this, in this state. But here's something I just, I have to say this. I talk about this sometimes. But this idea of signing pipeline agreements for $10 a foot, $15 a foot, I'm telling you, not good. I don't like it at all. I do not like it at all. And what kills me is, is that people, and especially there, people sign gas leases, good people with good beliefs, thinking they're dealing with people you know, who are representing when they're talking to them or telling them the truth of what's going to happen. And they signed leases in 2005, 6, 7, sometimes earlier. And now here we are, 2018, and you have no gas production. Despite all the different things that were said, you have no gas production. You have shut-in wells year after year after year, vertical wells that aren't producing. As of this past summer, there's 175 wells in regulatory inactive status by SWEPI. That's crazy to me, crazy. So then what happens? Here come the pipeline guys. Well, yeah, you know, we're the good guys. We're the ones that are going to get you money. Well, isn't that the same thing that the gas lease guys said? Oh, you're going to be rich. You're going to get your money, all these different things. Well, now the pipeline guys say, oh, well, you know, those guys, yeah, they might have been bad, but we're the good guys. We're the good guys. We want to get your money. Got to get pipelines to market. Yeah, you know, you're so frustrated. You've been sitting there year after year getting these shut-in checks despite all these things you were promised and seeing people in other parts of the, the state doing very well with royalty payments. So what do they say? Well, here's what we got to do. You got to sign a $10 a foot pipeline agreement. We'll get the gas to market. Well, again, remember the, you know, said mentioned it earlier, but the whole fool me once just because you tricked me the first time and I entered into an agreement that you're now sitting on year after year after year, you're going to then use that agreement as the basis for me to sign another bad agreement. How does that work? How do they piggyback one bad agreement and then say you should sign another one because the first one was bad and then we'll get you to sign this one. So you signed a gas lease that they're manipulating in my opinion. And now we want you to sign, we want you to sign a pipeline agreement at $10 a foot, which is unreal to me. Just terrible. I got one more quick story I want to get in. <laughs> so I get told this the other day company goes on a property when they were given survey permission and had specific rule or direction. Hey, don't do this. For example, don't drive on a property, go out, drive on a property, create ruts. Landowner's really mad says, Hey, you created ruts. Well, 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 excuse, excuse, excuse. So then the landowners or the company guy says, Oh, Hey, you know what? You do the pipeline agreement for let's say $10 a foot an example. And they say, you know what we'll do then we'll give you 500 extra bucks for the ruts we created. So we create ruts. Then we create ruts and then you sign a bad agreement and we'll give you $500 for the ruts we created, which we never should have created. Again, that is crazy. All right, I'm up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Remember, stop signing bad agreements. Put down the pen. Pick up the phone. Landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. Have a great, great week, everyone. See you next week.